Nothing's Phone 1 was officially announced today. All the information that we were lacking was officially announced. And I don't know. Hi, welcome to Z Gadget Review. Today, nothing had the official release for the Phone 1. This is the first Android smartphone by the Nothing company and this is something that we were expecting we have been getting information you know little pieces of information here and there we had a leak of what the specs might be of what the pricing might be and it turns out that those leaks were pretty accurate turns out that this device is going to be a mid-range phone as expected and the biggest change or the biggest appeal of the device is going to be the fact that the back has what they're calling glyphs that is a i will say arrangement or design of lights that actually has a function so let's start with the design of the device so this device is going to have gorilla 5 glass on the front and back of the phone with a 100 percent recycled aluminum frame so it's going to be a glass sandwich with aluminum around you won't have plastic anywhere on the phone and yes it's not gorilla victus it's gorilla 5 because remember this is going to be a mid-range device then we have the lights on the back and the lights on the back as i said on my previous video is something that we had actually seen already and we already knew what the purpose of it was so the idea is you're going to be able to use the lights in the back to program the way the lights uh, move and light up depending on who is contacting you so if you have your mom contacting you you'll have a specific way that the phone will light up if you have your sister boyfriend girlfriend friend whatever it might be you're going to have a different light scene going on on the back of the phone this way if you have the phone on vibrate or even on silent you'll be able to tell who's contacting you the one little thing there might be that if you are in a movie theater for example and somebody's contacting you the light on that thing might be pretty distracting or if you're at home watching a movie you have all the lights off again pretty distracting but still pretty cool the little light bar at the very bottom right above the charger is going to work as a charge indicator so that light is going to get taller as the phone charges another thing that we're going to get on the back of the device is a little red light every time you're taking a video you're going to see a little red light showing that is recording and i think obviously they're going with the retro look of having a red light every time you start recording something as cameras do but also i think it will help with privacy if you're trying to take a video of someone and the person might not want you to take a video of them that little red light is going to allow whoever is the subject to tell that you are taking a video. So maybe you won't be able to pull off those jokes when you tell people you're going to take a picture, you're taking a video to make them look like idiots. Now, this event was pretty underwhelming. There wasn't a lot of fanfare about it. I don't think it created the excitement that I was expecting a launch event to create. The whole idea of a launch event is to get people excited about the device and tell you kind of why you might want to buy this device. I didn't feel like that happened here. Um, we had Carol Pay, who is the owner of Nothing, pretty much sit in a theater and kind of talk about the phone. And even the things that were said about the phone were very very lightly glossed over for example nothing os nothing os is going to be the skin android version everything that i've read so far says that it is very lightly skin so you pretty much have a 100 percent android vanilla experience with some tweaks for example you're going to have controls for first party devices by nothing in this case the earbuds for nothing where as he explains you'll be able to control the uh, noise cancelling function the volume also they're building third-party controllers for other products now they didn't mention what other products they were going to support except 
a Tesla. And what they say for the Tesla is if you are a Tesla owner, which if you're a Tesla owner, why would you go with a form like this? But I don't know. That's, I think, besides the point. But let's say you're a Tesla owner and you have your nothing phone. Well, you'll be able to start the, the car using your phone. You'll be able to control the climate if you uh, have the phone. And I think if I'm not mistaken, because I'm not a Tesla owner, you can already do that through the Tesla app. Uh, so what extra... Uh, use are you going to be able to get out of the fact that you can do it directly with the phone that that wasn't clear to me i guess it saves you the time of having to click on the tesla app in order to open the app and do whatever you need to do but that's as far as they went to talking about nothing os they did make it perfectly clear that they don't want a bloated device that has a lot of features that most people aren't going to use and that clearly was a direct attack to Samsung, which comes with a phone that's busting at the seams with features that most people don't end up using. And a lot of times ends up making the device a lot slower than it needs to. And so pretty much what Nothing's saying here is we are going to skin our uh, version of Android, but it isn't going to be something that looks foreign or weird to use now before i get into all the specs another thing that that he was very adamant on talking about uh was the screen and they he said that what they decided to do was use a flexible amoled display now of course this is this this phone isn't a flexible phone it's not a foldable device but the reason why they decided to go with the amoled screen even though it's more expensive and needs to be is they wanted to give you that flat look of the screen so what he explained is instead of having a chin as we see most devices and you know the forehead on the device because of what he explains obviously the ribbon cables that are at the end of the screen they were able to get the AMOLED flexible screen because then they could wrap that screen at the bottom of the phone and hide that ribbon cable technically behind the screen. Therefore, you get this completely flush, flat screen look when you look at the phone. Is that something that is worth it? In my opinion, not really. But hey, as he says, they're fastidious about design and that is just something that they wanted to do. All right, let's move on to the specs of this device and even though it's a mid-range device still has some things that make it a little bit uh, more premium than other devices that have the same specs now the caveat is keep in mind that this device is not coming to the us yet it is going to focus first on europe china and india so if you want to get the device you'll have to buy it from one of those markets and bring it to the US. Let's start with the internals. The device is going to have a Snapdragon 778G+. Plus. This is a mid-range chip that launched in early 2021, customized specifically for nothing. So the device is going to be able to 15 watt Qi wireless charging, the device is going to have a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, but with a 33 watt wire charging. There is no charger in the box, so the trend continues of not including a charger in the box. It is going to be able to handle 5 watts of reverse wireless charging. Now the device starts at 8 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage, non-expandable. It goes all the way up to 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage but uh, that variant of the device isn't available yet it is going to be available later on the device is going to have an under display fingerprint sensor it is going to have an amoled 4k screen the size of the phone is 6.55 inches the device supports 120 hertz refresh rate so you're going to have that for gaming and whenever you are browsing websites 
The device starts at 399 pounds, 469 euros, which translates to about $474. This is for the entry level model, which is the eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. Now with the cameras, the device is going to have only two cameras on the back and the selfie camera on the front. And the reveal of the cameras was also pretty underwhelming like most of this event. Carl Pay pretty much trash all the other companies that have four cameras on the back. Of course, they were referring to the iPhone and most likely Samsung saying that you usually get one really good shooter and the other three are really crappy shooters. And they didn't want to do that, so they decided to just put two. In this case, having one good shooter and one crappy shooter. He also went on to say that as most companies do, they hire photographers to go to these exotic places and take pictures, fix up the images on Photoshop and then present them to the world. Now I gotta say that I agree with him because Time and time again, when I see events, especially by Apple, when I see those pictures, I go, all right, that is a picture that, yes, you could take with a camera like this, with the right equipment, the right location and everything else. But that's not a picture that the average person is taking. And so his point was that they weren't going to do that. They were going to show you what the camera on their phone can do without all that trickery and beautifying of the image and then they didn't show anything and you've been seeing the pictures as i've been talking here that are on their website hidden all the way in the newsroom section of their page that was kind of like a ha-hum event where it's just like hey we're gonna say these things that our cameras can do and then nah, 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 but we're not gonna show you anything if you want to see it go look at it yourself it was a little bit of a disappointment <laughs> When that happened, I was like, uh, okay, you're not going to show us these pictures? All right. The cameras are as follows. We're going to have, again, two in the back. The main camera is going to be a 50 megapixel Sony IMX7666 and a 50 megapixel Samsung IOCELL JM1 ultra wide camera. The front camera is going to be a 16 megapixel Sony IMX471. Now the device is going to be IP53 rating, meaning that it's going to be okay with splashes, but you won't be able to submerge this device. It is going to come with the latest Android 12 OS. It is going to receive three years of support of upgrading Android, four years of security patches, and the patches are going to be spaced out as every two months. So usually you get a monthly update when it comes to security for Android. If you have a Pixel device, for example, but with this, you're going to get it every two months. So that was pretty much everything that was announced at this event. Something that, that rubbed me the wrong way that I thought was a little hypocritical to say was that they were very interested on being a pretty much zero emissions company, which is why they have the aluminum being 100% recycled aluminum and using Gorilla Glass 5 and all these other things that they mentioned in respects to being environmentally conscious. Nothing actually has a deal with Polygon, which is a cryptocurrency slash NFT platform. And proof of that is that they came up with their own NFT before the official announcement and sale of this device. And there's going to be things from Polygon on this phone that you can unlock by using that NFT that you can claim. So if you're going to talk about the environment, it doesn't make sense that you're going to get in bed with a company that does cryptocurrency and NFTs, which is known to be bad for the environment because of how much energy it takes to uh, get these things. So, okay, so you're saying you're okay with the environment, uh, you know, or trying to help the environment, but you're going to go into cryptocurrency and marry both things and put it in your platform? Doesn't really sound right. At this point, if, if, if you wanted a phone from nothing, I will probably wait until next year because 
right now they have this whole thing going on where you have to be invited to buy it and all the stuff to make it feel exclusive. The phone will su is supposed to go on actual sale later on in the year. So if you want a way to do that, you can do that. But you got to keep in mind that what you will be getting is a phone that has a year old chip pretty much going into a two-year-old chip once January, February of next year rolls around. So you got to keep that in mind of what you're going to be paying for. As I said, I don't think it's a horrible device for the money, but if this device went down $50 to $100, so I'll say, you know, $50 to $80, I think that would be a better price point than what it is right now. I really hope that nothing decides to put out a more premium device in the next year or whatever the next iteration of this device is. And hopefully they tame down all that, you know, catchy phrases of NFTs and cryptocurrency and all the stuff that they're trying to put out right now. And I and, and I understand why they have to do it because you want to try to catch as many people in the market as you can, right? And if your phone is touting all these features, kind of like HTC's phone is doing, there's more chance that people who are interested in those things and looking for a device that can provide an experience of that type are going to lean towards a device like this. And if you're a new company trying to get your phone in people's pockets, you're going to do everything you can to achieve that goal. What do you think about the new phone one, the announcement that was made by nothing? If you watched it, were you excited about it? Were you underwhelmed? If you hadn't heard anything about what this device can do, how do you feel now that you know? Let me know in the comment section. That is it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up to help the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. Thank you very much for watching.